Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here tonight. Live from the SEC studios in White Bear Lake. Also, we're playing live in St. Paul at SPNN. And we're glad to have you here. Uh, fascinating information coming out today from our uh, uh, people suing uh, uh, who have been through the court system, the civil rights, saying their civil rights are being vi violated by the courts, by uh, the sheriffs, by the police, by the county attorneys. And Michelle McDonald, who ran for the Minnesota Supreme Court on April, March 19th, filed a federal civil lawsuit against many people in Dakota County uh, that hold the, the aforementioned positions. And so there was a press release that came out today. We're going to read that, discuss her case a little bit. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to get into the fiasco of the Maplewood Community Center and the cover-up that is being done uh, about the financial situation of the Maplewood Community Center and the person that they have as a spokesperson, spokesperson defending the Maplewood Community Center is Mayor Slawick. when you have four people who have been on that city council for years and years have watched that thing be financially bankrupt year after year after year after year and they said nothing. Instead they throw disparaging comments about uh, a past city manager uh, and it's just unbelievable how low they will crawl in the sewer to defend their uh, defend their immoral actions in my mind. It's just unconscionable what the Maplewood City Council and Mayor are doing. Um, all of them because they're not speaking up if the, the ones that should be. Uh, so we'll get into that in a little bit, but I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, let's go to that, um, let's switch the graphic there to the one that has the CFACT, campus.org. I want to bring that up because you want to go to that website. Ron Paul is coming into town April 6th. Uh, nope. Oh, somehow it didn't change. Uh, that's not the right one. It should, I don't know if you see it in there. But w, there you go, cfaccampus.org. Um, you go to that website, and then there'll be a banner across there, Ron Paul coming to town. There you'll find out the information. It does cost to go to this unless you're a student at the University of Minnesota. Um, but April 6th, from uh, doors open at 6, the, uh, the event starts at 7, and he'll be talking about, of course, liberty issues and issues that affect students and our, our culture, our nation. And it's going to be at the Ted Mann Concert Hall. So April 6th, um, go to that website, cfaccampus.org, to get all the information. I will be filming it. Uh, and so hopefully to play clips on this show, but just clips, because that's all we have time for. You really want to watch the whole thing, so I'd get down there uh, if you could. And there's special events if you want to dish out more money, uh, special meetings. But before that, on April 16th, on, uh, on April 6th, excuse me, there will be a press conference at 4 p.m., at the state office building in the uh, press conference room, which is room 181, which is right across from the Secretary of State's office. Uh, Michelle McDonald is going to have a press conference about her lawsuit, and uh, I'll be down there filming that one also, so you can find out her perspective and hear about uh, the questions the press have uh, for Michelle McDonald uh, with this lawsuit. This is a big deal because this is exposing Dakota County for their unbelievable, unethical practices that go on there uh, by the sheriffs and by the uh, city attorney, the fr frugal uh, law firm. I'll get his name right in a second here. Um, 
but it is just unbelievable what they've done to Michelle, what they've done, done to Don Mashak, what they've done to Sandra Grazzini Rucky, all the games that they have played, and they expect to get away with it scot-free. This is going to blow the lid off. And this is why I uh, promoted Michelle McDonald for the Minnesota Supreme Court, because she will not take this stuff sitting down. She knows what's going on. Uh, she understands the corruption in our courts and is willing to uh, protect you, uh, where these other justices are out there trying to protect the judiciary. They'll bend over backwards to protect the judiciary, and you as a uh, citizen, you know, you, you, you think you have constitutional rights? Uh-uh. Uh, you don't. Uh, only if they choose to give them to you and, and let you exist in them. Uh, but otherwise, you don't. Well, okay, before we get back into the McDonald, let's, let's talk Maplewood. Uh, it's just unbelievable, this Maplewood Community Center. And so uh, the pushback is never from the city council is never about the reality. It's about the fiction, and it's just about pushback. How do we discredit people who come before them and expose the truth about what's going on? And, and one of those people they try to discredit over and over again is Bob Zick. And he has over and over, time and time again, when he's been called a liar, uh, he's been proven right. And actually it's the mayors and the city council that have been lying and not Bob Zick. Uh, why? Because he knows what's going on. Uh, and he has the information. And you may not like the information he gives, but it ends up being the truth. Such as the uh, he told in a public in the in the meet, uh, meeting for citizens comment, the city council meeting, he talked about the fire stations being closed, and he was outright told the mayor told him you're a liar. That was Mayor Rossbach, and all the while Rossbach at that time knew that that was in the plan to close the fire stations. But he had to call him a liar because they didn't want the news out. So we're going to start off the show with clip uh, number two on the DVD there about Bob's comments about the Maplewood Community Center, and he makes comments about a couple other things. But notice that he does talk about his cable TV show uh, in these comments. And... And then, because later on, the mayor is going to come back and, and say, well, that, you know, try to say, well, that's a bad thing that people talk about this on their TV shows. She's trying to discredit shows like mine and like Bob's and like Diana Longrie's who are telling what's going on in Maplewood just because they have a TV show. That's the only reason you shouldn't. Believe what they're saying because they have a TV show. That's the rationale. <sighs> Unbelievable. That's, that's low. All right, Rat, why don't you answer the issue, and you'll see that she really doesn't. All right, let's hear what Bob has to say. I always think it's, it's interesting, you know, when we have these oh, narratives that come up for the talk about that's their cable shows and what they're going to do. Okay, I wanted uh, number two, two is Bob uh, go to the menu there. See, now there's the mayor starting to talk about, I think it's interesting about the dialogue that's on these TV shows. You know, what's the other narrative out there? Well, uh, she has the As wrong As you know, narrative. you have three minutes. Good evening, Mayor Council. I am Bob Zick, uh, Insight Insight News Hour, Wednesday nights, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m., cable channel 15. I'm going to talk about the things that we're going to go over on the show on Wednesday because I wouldn't be able to get all this in in three minutes. Um, these are important things, though. First of all, I want to start out with uh, falsifying the Bloomberg charity grant application. And uh, so now, and then we're going to, of course, that includes talking about the YMCA and the Maplewood Community Center contract where the city now put a, a middleman in, into the operation. So up till this time, the community center that you designated as a park 
as uh, was operating a half a million in the red. Now it will be three quarters of a million in the red. The uh, the the other issue here is the uh, the cost now of a half a million dollars a year for the city manager and assistant city manager, well, de facto city manager. That would be the assistant city manager. I want to remind this council that when Mr. Copeland was city manager, the city actually operated in the black and uh, at a salary cost of one-fourth of what you've incurring now. Do you people realize that when I look around here, there's cost to the taxpayers $3,000 a week for every one of you. How many property taxpayers, you know, that's for, for some people in this city, that means that the property taxes it takes at, for the whole year for a homeowner takes two of those homeowners just to pay one week salary. And uh, so we have 18,000 here, normally you have a couple more, 24,000. The question I always have, are the taxpayers getting the value for their, their dollar? You know, when you look at your, your weekly or your bi-weekly salary printouts of over 2,000 a week per person, that doesn't, 2,500, excuse me, that doesn't include the benefits. So we're sitting $3,000 a week up here. I mean, I just, I just ask myself, do the taxpayers get $3,000 a week in benefit? The other, you know, I want, to, I want you people to keep this in mind. Uh, government uh, jobs are great jobs. Um, the Maplewood retreat, that, uh, of course, if that would have been been on cable, I wouldn't have had to show up. And But it reminds me of what went on in North St. Paul over there and what was went on in, Just in about the three minutes, Mr. Zick. Back back room. You could finish then up. the other the other issue that we'll talk about is the the SWAT documents, the strengths, weakness, opportunity and threats. And uh, I again I would want those documents at the retreat. Um, it just make a copy of your copy of the documents that were passed out. Thank you, Council. All right, he, he raises a lot of good points. Uh, one thing that I thought was very interesting there is that each council member went through a personal evaluation as far as their strengths and weaknesses, you know, and, and where they lie. And so we're going to, well, I don't know that I'm going to go into that very much uh, at all, definitely not today, but I, I know uh, I'm sure other shows are going to do that. But uh, the analytical ability of our um, city council members is really bad. <laughs> I mean, I, if I remember what was on there, I don't think any of them had any analytical ability. There might have been one that had some, uh, but it was really, really bad. Uh, but my focus here, um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the retreat. That was the fifth item he talked about. Maplewood has a retreat where the city council gets together with the city staff, and then they go and say, hey, what are our goals? What do we want to try to accomplish? You know, they hash it out. And they don't have it in their city council uh, room. Uh, typically, it's been at a fire station. But if it's in the city council, they can put it on TV, everybody can see it. Otherwise, now you got to go down there and get somebody to go down there and film it. Uh, but usually it's, it's at a Maplewood Fire Department. But this year, remember, with the Maplewood Community Center right there, in operating in the red, losing money, they don't go have their retreat at the Maplewood Community Center. They go to St. Paul and have it at a location. In my understanding, it was to cost them about $1,000 to rent that for the day. I, I'm not positive on that. It's, it's what I've heard. I've got to follow up on that. But either way, if they're dishing out money, they should dish it out to the Maplewood Community Center, which is operating 
in deficit. It's not making it. That's just bizarre thinking on their part. That, that is bad management by whoever set that up. They should realize that. And so why have it in St. Paul? Hmm, maybe the Maplewood residents can't make it over there. Okay, who, who knows? Um, 500000 for city managers and assistant, for the city manager and the assistant city manager. Uh, boy, that, that's just outrageous. You know, the city used to operate with only one city manager. And I think that total cost with benefits was less than $100,000. That was Greg Copeland. And when he was the city manager, the city operated in black. Now, the community center didn't, <laughs> but the city did. And, and, and so, uh, and a lot of money was saved at, during that time. Um, and it's not that way anymore. It's spent, 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 let's tax increase. Uh, and the people are crying out in Maplewood about how big their tax increase was uh, going on. Uh, I'm not going to get into Booberg Charity Grant, but these other shows are going to cover that. But it, it's uh, the whole scam. Well, fortunately, it's a private company being scammed, which would be Bloomberg, the former mayor of uh, New York, uh, or maybe he's current. I don't. Well, I don't know, but. He's the one getting scammed by Maplewood, in my opinion, uh, with the false statements going on in there. But another show will cover that. It's either Bob Show or Diana Longrie's uh, off the record, or Citizens Reporter is going to cover that. All right, we got a phone call uh, coming in. Caller, do you have a comment or question? Well, this is actually Diana Longrie. Well, hi, Diana <laughs> Longrie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I want to thank you for bringing this up because it really needs to be repeated. And I want to confirm that much of what you've been discussing this evening, I actually have verification of by documents that I received through data practices. Okay. And when you talked about the, uh, care, uh, the um, strengths assessment that the council members went through, right. when you look at that and you look at who scored any points whatsoever in the analytical column? Right. The answer is zero. Oh, nobody. Nobody. Even the highly esteemed uh, attorney, um, Council Member Abrams, who really prides herself on being a litigator and a negotiator, and the way she conducts herself in front of the uh, Ramsey Suburban Cable Commission, you would think that, you know what, she's analyzed <laughs> everything in the world. And yes, when you look at her scores, she has not even one point under analytical. Um, uh, actually, she scored very high in positivity. Oh, really? I'm not quite sure hmm. how that matches her behavior at the recent Ramsey uh, Washington Suburban Cable um, Commissioner meeting because it wasn't very positive. No, but, you no. know we will we film footage of that. Um, on probably one of the shows coming up in the future in the week because it's very important to show uh, how Maplewood participates with their true partners, the cities who they have and share borders with. Right. Now, you, you also brought up this issue about, and I, and I like the way you framed it at the beginning of the show, where you said that, you know, they're having uh, Mayor Slawick be the, right. uh, the front person to put on the, the, the face of Maplewood with regard to this community center issue. Right. And... And yet the other council members, at least three of the four, have been there like oodles of years, and yes. yet they all just sit by and let her hold, you know, the bag, so to speak, right. and yet she allows it as well. So they're all complicit in this. A and, absolutely. And, and this issue about the uh, community center and the YMCA, that when you look at the final numbers, 
Maplewood is paying in, is somewhere around two hundred and fifty thousand a year for the YMCA to manage the aquatic center, which is the pool and the hot right. tub area. And yet, while they say it's going to be a break-even proposition, Ooh. being the analytical person I am, because <laughs> um, <laughs> I have taken that test and I yes. do score a couple of points in that analytical column, right. that, that you see, you look at the numbers and you will see that it doesn't add up. Now, while I agree we need to do something with the community center, going further in the hole is not the right option. And and you brought up this issue about the city manager and assistant yeah, and city I, manager. And I have a couple questions on that before yeah. you leave, but go ahead and okay. finish your statement. Well, I was just going to say this. this you, you put out a number there of, I think you said, $500,000 a year for the manager and the assistant city manager. Now, there are going to be people out there who are going to poo-poo that because they're only looking at their salaries, right. but they're not adding in all the perks and the benefits right. because in Absolutely. addition to the basic pass- package of he- health care benefits and retirement benefits right. and other kinds Trips, of benefits like education. that, you have, to, yep, and you have to consider that they get a car allowance. I believe Melinda Coleman gets a car allowance of five hundred dollars a month. Okay. So think about how many miles a month that would mean that she actually travels for right. the city of Maplewood. Right. Um, the question I have is, um, Kathy Juniman is going to bring up the issue of lawsuits when Greg Copeland <laughs> was the uh, uh, city manager. Of course, that's why you were mayor, and I only know of one. And that was Sherry Lay uh, suing the city for basically didn't the city um, get rid of her position? And then she sued. No. Uh, go ahead. You can answer yeah, that. Well, that, that. That's a good question. Actually, there was the elimination of the assistant police chief position, right? which resulted in um, uh, John Bannock uh, claiming that uh, that was something that he should be compensated for, uh, where basically the League of Minnesota Cities did not want to support the city's right to restructure right. the way that they choose to restructure, because it was at a workshop where uh, John Bannock and uh, Chief Tamala uh, stated that 90%, roughly 90% of John Bannock's position was in running and coordinating the effort of the dispatch center that Maplewood had at that time. Right. When their dispatch center went over to Ramsey County, that position went away. Right. And so that was one of them. Another one well, was sued. with regard to Sherry Lay, I, as you mentioned. Diana? And... Diana, so yeah. Bannock did sue? He did, yes. And he didn't win, though, did he? Well, in, in, instead, what happened is that the League of Minnesota Cities, because they control right. cases and how right. they proceed, because they're the they insurance demanded company. settlement. They just did a settlement with them, okay. Yeah, they, they demanded it. Basically, they told us, you will settle. And so we had to. Because right. otherwise, we were not covered. The by city them. would have had, and that's the the fraud of the uh, League of Minnesota Cities uh, in, in this whole situation that they really control the cities instead of working for the city, they work for themselves and actually right. will settle lawsuits. In my opinion, to help people that they think are on their side. They are not there to defend the city's position or the elected official's position necessarily. They are looking at it from the position of their public policy right. position, right. their public policy precision, uh, position, and their actuarial tables. So they have their policies right. and procedures set up in such a way that if you don't know when is the time that you have to opt out of a case uh, and not have their representation any longer, if you don't know when that timing 
uh, deadline and that trigger is, then, and you have passed that, you must abide by what they tell you you right. must do. Right. And so and they, of course, they never, they never told us. No. It was only after the fact they said, oh, you've passed that deadline. You can't do something different. And that right. was the case in the Sherry Lay case because right. keep in mind, she sued both in federal court and district court on several different posi- on several different claims, and most of all her claims, including the federal claim, were all thrown out and dismissed. There was only one uh, that survived. Our attorney that we had through the league actually wanted to appeal it because she thought that it was there was something wrong with it okay. that it was not correct, and yet the league would not allow appeal. Ah. Uh. Wow. And well, we that's, had a that's again the same thing. And page report on her on uh, Sherry Lay's uh, indiscretions, improprieties, and failure to do her job. We had a 65 page investigation of that to support the position of the city manager to let her go and put an employee, an employment law attorney in that place instead. Wow. Uh, and so, again, once again, the League of Minnesota City sold out Maplewood. Absolutely. It, it, and that would be my opinion in that, in that case. Yeah. And even if you were to add up the various lawsuits that Maplewood had that they all want to point right. to as being these, you know, these, oh, these horrible lawsuits, if you were to compare them to the payout right. that Maplewood had to give to Wipers Recycling and to Patty Guerin with regard to the cost of the litigation of the improper uh, storming of that building and the police brutality yeah, to absolutely. that woman, the amount of cost of litigation of that case and the two cases related to it, I believe it was two cases related to it, maybe just one, mm-hmm. if you add them up, they actually are more than adding up the Bannock and the Sherry Lake case. Yeah, what, what uh, but... And, and Kathy Juneman continues to ignore the fact that she was implicated as supporting these efforts exactly. to basically put wipers out of business, to storm the building with, a, with an improper administrative warrant, and to go and say, we support police brutality. So how much mo- implicated in that? Right, I, I believe so. That's I, my belief. Oh, how much uh, Cherry Lay and uh, uh, Bannock? How much did they get uh, total for? Do you remember that it, or? You know, I'd have to look back in my archives. I but I, I think it's I now. think it's I mean, less let's than. Let's talk about this. This was in it's less than three hundred thousand. I mean, talk about yeah. how long ago that was, and you got right. Kathy Juneman still talking about it. Yeah, but it's less than uh, I think three hundred thousand dollars for both of yes. them total. Uh, I I believe so. Yes. So yeah. we're we're still spending an extra hundred thousand dollars for these city managers. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, that's right. <laughs> I mean, and and we're really not going to get any more protection. <laughs> Right. So. And, and you you got to remember that, you know, everyone says, oh, what about the bad press? Well, you know what? The bad press they didn't was know what fabricated, they were talking about. Yeah. and it was indeed supported by the people who wanted to make the new right. maple wood fail. Yeah, and, and, the, and the press wouldn't talk the to the people, and they wouldn't talk to the people who knew what was going on. No, absolutely, that's, that's, absolutely not. Right. Okay. But I, can, but I can assure you that I have boxes and boxes and boxes of documents to support my position and everything I have to say. Well, and that's uh, what Kathy Juneman is going to have to one day uh, reconcile with uh, because she won't, I don't think she'll be able to last and continue in her, in her uh, lies um, of what she's talking about. So. Yep. Keep that keep that evidence around. <laughs> All right. It's under lock and key. Okay. Thank you for the call, caller. For Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. I appreciate it. Yep. All right, Diana Longry, former mayor of Maplewood. Uh, when we actually had a budget surplus and saved money, you know, one thing is interesting on these analytical tests. 
that our city people took uh, <laughs> is if they had the ability to analyze, they would have realized that they shouldn't have taken the test. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have the analytical ability to realize that, so they took the test. Unbelievable. Why would you take a test? I mean, it's not forced on you. They can't force it on you. And now it's public record about your strengths and weaknesses, and nobody there knows how to analyze. And uh, I sure wouldn't have taken that test unless they had some gun held to their head. I don't know what it was, but now... Uh, I think it would be important that uh, uh, we get somebody that actually says they have analytical ability and get rid of these uh, council members that don't have any. Uh, we need somebody on there. Uh, and the other thing on these tests is very difficult not to score at any level at all. I mean, usually you got a, a one in there at something. So uh, if you're not getting something, maybe there's something wrong with the test. Um, who knows? Okay, let's get back to the YMCA, which is the final thing here. Now, I gave a little talk to uh, the city council last week. Did not talk about it, that I was going to say anything about this on my show. Um, but let's hear, that's uh, number one there. Uh, so let's hear what I have to say about the Maplewood Community Center and the agreement with the YMCA. I want to talk about the uh, Maplewood Community Center and the agreement with the YMCA. Uh, I wish there was a lot more notice on this. The, the one thing that the YMCA is, it's a charity. And uh, they don't pay people going rates. And they are able to survive by millions of dollars of donations. And right now, the only way the Maplewood Community Center is able to survive is by a gun to people's head saying, give us your money. We got a $500,000 a year in deficit, and we're taking it from you and providing for those who will pay a, uh, a fee. And so bringing in YMCA doesn't change anything. It's still going to operate. Maplewood Community Center is still going to operate uh, with a deficit and uh, the services, you know, they may be better. It just doesn't matter. You're going to have a deficit. The, the point is, like I've said before, this isn't your business. You shouldn't be in this business. That's not your jobs, okay? The police, the fire, making sure those are good, those are supported correctly, that's your job. And, and the streets, uh, so I just wanted to be on record that you know that I know it's not going to work and that the people know it's not going to work because it can't. It's just impossible. Sell the place, let a private entity get that building on our tax rolls. Uh, it'd be a whole lot different situation. Then you wouldn't have to be spending all your time dealing with these issues that you shouldn't be dealing with. and. Foc instead focusing on the greater issues, which is the people's liberties and their freedom to choose where they want to work out, where they want to hold their meetings. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was a really good speech, in my personal opinion. Uh, Maplewood is not a church. You know, I, there's a lot of churches that have gyms, and uh, some even have swimming pools, and... Uh, there's these free associations going on. And, you know, if Maplewood, matter of fact, if the atheists want to have a club, they can go out and all the atheists get together. Atheists are having churches now. And they can go and do, and they want to help people but that, and help the youth and whatever. But that's not the job of a government or of a city council. The job of a city campo, c council <laughs> is to make sure that you, as an individual, have your liberties. And everybody gets to use everything that the city council does. So that's why we do the roads, and you can't be prohibited from that road unless you violated some uh, law 
you can't say, okay, you're Hispanic, you're black, uh, you can't be on this road. Uh, everybody gets the use of that road. Uh, same with the parks. It's there for everybody to use. So um, this concept that we can have a community center and only certain people get to use it is, is bogus. It's, it's a level of depravity that is unconscionable. And you say, well, really, is it, that's not that bad. Yeah, it is. That's why our nation was founded, so that we can have freedom of association and we can get together with our like-minded people. And as long as we don't violate anybody else's constitutional rights and live in peace, we're okay. Okay, and, and we get to do that. But that's not what Maplewood Community Center is doing. They're saying, I'm taking money from you so that these other people can have their saunas and spas and they don't have to pay the full price. That's the depravity. And they, they get it. They understand it. They don't care, which is another level of depravity. And now you're going to hear the mayor talk about why all this is okay and that they're concerned. And it just blows my mind away. Why isn't Bob Cardinal, why isn't Kathy Juneman, Marv Copen, why aren't they saying, talking about this? And why aren't they giving an answer and saying, yeah, you know what, we got a problem, and this isn't the answer. We got to look at other solutions. It's just, it's, you know, you can have the best swimming courses in the world, okay? And if you're giving it away and you can't make a budget, that's not the city's business. The YMCA, the church, the, uh, um, the, the schools, the uh, private clubs, they can do that because they raise money themselves. And who cares? But when they take it from you, you better care. And you don't get to use that? No, that's not how it works. And so what the city ends up being is the atheist club because you can't teach the values. Now, so now we've got a contract with the YW, YMCA or the YWCA that, you know, that are supposed to have Christian values, and, and this group makes its money by donations and fees, but that, they get to do that because they're not a government. Um, and it's going to be better? It's not. It doesn't change anything because there isn't enough time, there isn't enough space in order to make it profitable because they're not charging enough. Okay, let's hear what the mayor has to say in her rebuttal to all this stuff, if you can call it that. You know, I always think it's, it's interesting, you know, when we have these narratives that come up for the talk about their cable shows and what they're going to do on their cable shows, and yet... Um, there is, a, there is another narrative that I think the public, you know, uh, deserves to hear. Um, a couple things. I think the YMCA partnership is really innovative. I think it is something we've take, done very carefully. We went and visited the YMCAs. We visited their ones with the banquet hall. We visited one where they had other partnerships. Because, you know, the reality is, folks, our community center is losing money. And we are concerned about that. We are watching out for the taxpayer's dollar. We want to make sure that the community center is, is doing the best it can. When this partnership came forward, it seems like a great opportunity to try it on, right? It's not a permanent thing. It's an opportunity to try on the partnership. We know what the Y is good at. You know, they're really good at swimming lessons. They're really good at, at running pools and doing those types of things. And that's what they're going to be helping us out with. And we hope the, the, the bottom line is that this is going to help our taxpayers, that this is going to help our city. When we talk about private-public partnerships and solutions, you know, we could just have the community center just sit there and do nothing and continue to lose money, or we could try something. And so we're trying this partnership with the YMCA, which is a very trusted uh, local and national organization, and I, I, I think it's really innovative, and I think it's something that's really great that our community is doing. All right, let's bring it back here. Uh, that CD is uh, going to keep going. Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's another option. Sell the place. 
Okay, it'd be on the tax rolls. You want to, you want to, uh, we need a different graphic up there, Nathan. Uh, so you put me back on camera three. Um, you, you want a, put it on the tax rolls. We're making money. You get rid of Dewey Canico, who's been running this place into the hole and raising borrowing forever to uh, upgrade equipment that doesn't, some of it doesn't even upgrading. Um, and just get rid of it. That's what you do. And then somebody else run, you know what, you don't have to care how it's run. You don't, you know, they may make money, they may lose money. Who cares? <laughs> you know? But, you know, we are concerned about losing money. Well, no, if you really were concerned about losing money, show how this partnership would make money and make the Maplewood Community Center break even. Uh, great opportunity, innovative? No, nah, there's nothing innovative about this. There's nothing new. There's nothing creative. It's going to be added cost because you're providing a middleman uh, in this situation. Get rid of Dewey. Maybe, maybe you might make some money here. Get him out of that uh, that that position. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, great at swimming lessons. We've been doing it over and over. But is the YMCA great at breaking even or making money without donations? They can't do it. They haven't done it. Maybe they have. I don't think they have. They're always calling for donations. See, that's and that's okay for them. Not for the city of Maplewood. Not to, hey, you know what? Make your donation and you can't use it. And by the way, if you don't, we're going to take your property from you. That's how they operate. That's why this whole thing is immoral from the beginning. And they need to step up to the plate and recognize it. Uh, yeah, they're not, they're not concerned about the aspect of losing money. Innovate. It's just a sales job. That's all it is. When they went through and de dealt with the financials of it, there was no showing that it was going to increase revenue a significant amount. It's not. It's. I'd be very, very surprised. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's play the next clip because I think that one talks about Greg Copeland. You know what? We got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could show the other clips, but I want I wanted to focus on the community center there because it's just not bad news. Hey, th there's a, a press release came out today regarding uh, the federal lawsuit against a number of people in um, Dakota County uh, government officials, um, and and the press release was saying that there's a press conference April 6 at 4 p.m. at the Minnesota State Office building, which is room 181. Uh, that's where the House of Representatives meet uh, for their committee meetings and have their office. Also, the minority uh, Senate has their offices there. But here's what the press release said. Uh, former Minnesota Supreme Court nominee and family rights advocate Michelle McDonald files lawsuit against Minnesota sheriffs and others for unlawful detention and psychological torture. Okay, uh, and I believe she's got a case. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, March 26, yesterday, well, which is today, right? Um, Yesterday, high-profile lawyer and family rights advocate Michelle McDonald and her husband Tom Shimonta filed a 60-page complaint against Dakota County deputy sheriffs, the Flugel Law Firm, and others seeking injunctions and money damages for more than 20 claim, 22 claims, including false arrest, false imprisonment, conspiracy, and malicious prosecution. And, you know, in my opinion here, I'm just going to add in, she's not the only one that this happens to in Dakota County, and it's been happening to Don Mashek. McDonald's lawsuit filed in the District of Minnesota Federal Court stems from her representation of an indigent mother in family court pro bono. Now, let me tell you, this indigent mother had money, had a lot of money, 
it was all taken away. It was the court that made her indigent <laughs> and the attorneys that were representing her uh, that made her indigent, in, indigent. I mean, and they didn't even represent it, her. And that's another sidelight to this. Michelle McDonald went back to, to have these attorneys explain your fees and show your work. And uh, the attorneys uh, complained, and the judge, uh, which happened to be Leslie Metzen, uh, covered up for those attorneys, saying, well, they don't have to show their justify their fees. This is outrageous. I mean, this is a literal scam, in my opinion, going on in the, in the court system. And they know it, and they know it full well, and nobody is stepping up to the plate to deal with this issue. You made that money, you charged these fees, show it. And so how does somebody spend $200,000 uh, on an attorney and that attorney doesn't represent them? You don't get a day in court. You know, they, in other words, in my opinion, a lot of these attorneys are scamming people. And it's not the only one that spent $200,000 and, and got nothing. I've seen it happen to other people. And they're just, they just don't know, but they're in desperate spots in these, a lot of these family law cases. All right, back to the press conference. So she was representing an indigent mother in family court pro bono. After observing what the veteran lawyer and family rights advocate believed to be unlawful activity by Dakota County Judge David Knudsen, McDonald filed a federal class action against Judge Knudsen and sought to recuse him from her client's case. So she filed a federal class action lawsuit against David Knudsen. Um, and let's see, uh, the next day McDonald was summoned to Knudsen's courtroom where he, she was unceremoniously handcuffed, detained, and tortured by Dakota County Deputy Sheriffs for nearly 36 hours. On Judge Knudsen's orders, McDonald was required to complete her client's trial in handcuffs with deputy sheriffs standing behind her with guns. Of course, deputy sheriffs carry guns, but understand she hadn't been charged with anything even at that time. Uh, but she's detained. It's, it's worse than this. Um, as detailed in the 299 count lawsuit, McDonald alleges deputy sheriffs employed up to seven of the 11 internationally recognized forms of psychological torture while she was in their custody. McDonald was further disallowed a single phone call and deputy sheriffs despairingly referenced late South African President Nelson Mandela before threatening her with 30 days of additional detention. Deputies acted with the aid of city attorneys at Flugel Law Firm, whom they claimed would merely file a motion with the court to allow them to continue to detain McDonald without a cause. Now, McDonald, obviously an attorney, knows they can't do this, but here they've already done a whole bunch of illegal stuff, and they're threatening her to do more. So this is abuse. This is uh, psychological torture, okay, by lying and threatening to do things when they've already done other things that are illegal. Um, so McDonald notified lawyers for Dakota County and Judge Knudsen of her intent to file a lawsuit several months ago. In response to McDonald's detailed notice of claims, Dakota County lawyer James Bactrum, of course he's the county attorney there, filed a frivolous complaint with the Minnesota Lawyers Board in a retaliatory attempt to disrupt her lawyer's licensing. Judge Knudsen's attorney at the Minnesota Attorney General's office just flatly refused to comply with the request to preserve evidence of the detention and torture. Neither presented facts to refute the claims made by McDonald. And this is interesting because in the courtroom, there's cameras. And we've showed the uh, courtroom videos of Michelle McDonald in the past. We showed just recently the Don Meshek courtroom videos. And the testimony of the, the uh, officer who runs the system uh, says these things are preserved. 
And Michelle right away asked for them to be preserved. Therefore, they get pulled out and put on a separate hard drive and, and, and are preserved until later. Otherwise, after 30 or plus days, they get, uh, <clears throat> if nobody says, I want the video, they get thrown out of the, out of the picture. Or they get thrown away if nobody needs them after 30 some days. <clears throat> but here Michelle asks for them right away and is ha having great difficulty getting them. The same with Don Mashek, who didn't get them uh, uh, until five days before the, uh, his hearing, and only some of them, not everything he requested. And only the ones that gave uh, far distant, y you couldn't tell what was going on to exonerate him. It's really bad in Dakota County Courthouse. Now, according to McDonald's attorney, Nathan Bush, now Nathan Bush, I want you to know, he ran for judge in Hennepin County. I believe it was Hennepin County, you know, one of the 65 judges out there against a sitting judge, lost, but he ran uh, and um, he was, um, he, he tried, I don't know if he tried to get endorsement or, or whatever from the Republican Party, but he heard of Michelle's stuff, and I was there when they first met and got together, and, and he said, hey, I want to help you on this. This is outrageous. I heard your story. I've read pieces on this. This is outrageous what's going on. I want to know more, and he signed up, okay, and also another uh, civil rights attorney uh, signed up on this case too. So it's, it's a pretty good attack here that's going on. So according to McDonald's attorney Nathan Bush, our Constitution guarantees every citizen's inalienable rights of due process before arrest, before arrest and detention to prevent exactly the outrageous tyranny Dakota County officials have inflicted on Ms. McDonald. However, the words of the Constitution have no meaning unless our judiciary both respects and abides by these words. When the judiciary refuses to do so and instead retaliates against attorneys like Ms. McDonald, who are asserting their rights and the rights of their clients, then both the judiciary and the state have become the very tyrants that the founders of this country sought to banish. And I, I can't agree with this more. I mean, this is exactly what's going on in Dakota County. Judge David Knutson, in my mind, is a tyrant. And he goes down to the legislature, and he's the one overseeing the Board on Judicial Standards. He's the head person down there, not the executive officer, but the head uh, appointed person uh, and spokesperson for the uh, Board on Judicial Standards in, in, in relationship to the citizens in appointed by the governor. You know, Governor Dayton is appointing a former state Republican senator uh, to the chair of the Board on Judicial Standards. What's going on there? You know, why hadn't, wouldn't Dayton put somebody else in there? Uh, it's just, just a question. You know, who's, what, you know, this is, just doesn't, it doesn't mash, doesn't seem right. Of course, this is, you know, we're, we're nonpartisan or, you know, non-biased. But here's David Knudsen, probably in my mind, one of the most dishonest, disrespectful judges in the state of Minnesota and operating out of Dakota County. Who's, the head, who's on the board on judicial standards? So who's, what judge is going to get looked at unless it's a political looking at, you know, to put, put some judge in line who's actually protecting people's constitutional rights? Who knows? We don't know. These questions need to be answered. Okay, uh, let's see, where was I? Um, yeah, uh, the tyranny in these courtrooms. So we'll see what happens there. Okay, we've got about a minute left here. Oh, good, we're almost uh, done. McDonald is a mother, wife, and family rights advocate that has practiced law for more than a quarter century. She's admitted to practice law in Minnesota, Massachusetts, the United States Supreme Court. Notably, McDonald was the Republican nominee for Minnesota Supreme Court in 2014, where she garnered more than 46% of the vote in her first bid for public office, the highest of any Republican candidate in the state of Minnesota that year. 
Okay, McDonald is also represented, and her husband is also suing in this thing, uh, Shimoda, are represented by attorneys M. Tyeri uh, Garrett, uh, J.D. of Dallas, Texas, and Nathan Bush, Ph.D., Ph.D., J.D. of YZ, Minnesota. Uh, this uh, Tyeri, I'm butchering her name, Garrett, um, civil rights lawyer, understands the corruption in Minnesota and understand the games that get played, like Backstrom going in and saying, uh, I'll file an ethics uh, complaint to the Minnesota Lawyers Responsibility Board that did not go anywhere. That was dropped uh, by the board. Um, and But this is part of the backlash. This is part of the backlash that happened to Jill Clark when she was exposing the corruption in the courts. Uh, 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 she exposed a particular judge in Hennepin County, and uh, the judge filed 22 ethics complaints. Not 22. Yeah, 21 ethics complaints somewhere in there against Jill Clark. And then her health spiraled downward because of that. Uh, it is troubling, uh, these things that take place. And they're there to protect themselves. Of course, they have the right to protect themselves. But to abuse the process, no, they don't. All right, we'll have more on this next week. Uh, remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week. As the firefly brings the light. You said to me that you wouldn't leave. But now I see that you're lost.